Very often when we're turning something, it will... I say we, very often when I'm turning something, I will get it about the shape that I want, about the size that I want, and I lose concentration or whatever, and I get a catch. Well, we all know when that happens, what, there's a couple of things you can do. One of them is keep turning and turn the catch out, but something else you can do is what I've been doing. I started making my own micarta oh, about 20 years ago, and... I had the thought to take that a little bit further, and I started making pens out of denim. And, and and I don't mean gluing a piece of denim on a blank and casting it in clear resin. I mean wrapping the entire tube in denim and either resin or super glue. And they, those make some really pretty pens. Well, I thought if I can do that with a pen... I should be able to do something similar to embellish a bowl or to fix a flaw. So let's say you've got flaws in your piece like this bug do here or that knot that you don't like or a split that otherwise mars the piece. You can embellish this piece with the technique that I'm going to show tonight. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my initial mark so I know where to stop. And I'm basically going to take out that knot and probably some of this. So we'll make my mark there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make me a channel in here, and then I'm going to fill it with fabric. Natural fabric, fabrics like cotton work best. So what we're going to do is basically come in here and cut a thin can. We're going to keep that about a sixteenth of an inch. Is all you need. Now, if you really want to you really want to get creative with something like this. You can waste a lot of material and go in uh, a quarter of an inch and wrap it. And then when you turn the inside, you'll get it on out, inside and out. I don't do that very often because it's just not all that beneficial. Now, the flatter you can make this groove, the better. And it's not quite flat enough for my liking right there. And the reason I say you want to make it flat is so when you wrap your fabric around it, it doesn't bunch. One of the things you want to keep in mind when you're doing something like this is when you're wrapping this around, remember this spins toward you. So you want to wrap the fabric away from you. That way, when you start turning it, you're turning the end piece, not with the end piece towards you. If you wrap it this way, you have a tendency to sometimes peel your fabric away, and that's not what you want. So first thing you have to do, you just lay it in there. Well, I look, I guess, pretty good, didn't I? You can do this with either super glue or with resin or epoxy. I've used both. I like super glue. It's a little quicker. I'm going to tack this down on the end with some thick. And you pretty much just saturate it. Now the fabric I use, like I said, I prefer cotton, but natural fabrics work better. I say natural, meaning organic. Now, you will use a fair amount of CA doing this.
and I'm going to leave it in my hands. Like this. I'm going to use the back now, so that's not bad. Okay, it's just in. You can do it. So I'm not going to turn this piece tonight. I'm not going to let it sit for a little while. And you want to start off easy. Light touch. Because, like, if you've ever turned any resin or epoxy or whatever, uh, it can be a little chippy if you're not careful. And the same holds true for this. Now, I've got to take a seat over. So, I'm going to leave that up. I'm going to leave that up. You just want to take it down until it's all nice and smooth. Well, see, I got some blowout. But I have a fix. I just happen to have some more of this fabric. So what I'm going to do is cut some small pieces. I've had small pieces break out before, but never anything quite that large. That's very true. I hadn't planned on turning this one tonight, but I'm glad you talked me into it. I'll need to fix that, but that's no issue. I'll have to put a a tenon over here on the inside and turn this around and fix the outside of the bottom, but but I think that'll look pretty good. You can hit it with the sandpaper real quick. Just up here. I'm just going to sand the fabric and hit it with a little sanding sealer so we can see what it looks like. Ooh. I'm glad I talked you into it, Billy. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Both, both times. <laughs> oh yeah and with this one because of the nature of the fabric rather than having those same patterns throughout like on the purple with this one because it was more of a scene and there's multiple colors and things going on you you can't really tell it but there was a fabric change right there i mean it's got a really cool look to it so that's just one way we can either embellish a turning like we did these or like i say you got a bad catch and you don't want to make the piece any smaller than you have to or you got a knot that you want to cover up or you've got now that knot that we covered up out here we're still going to see it on the inside but that's not necessarily a bad thing either our biggest confinement as wood turners at least i find for me our, our biggest confinement is our imagination. A little imagination can take you a long way. Well, what if I try this? Try it. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work. If you saw my demo, you saw I had problems with what I had inlaid in this. And if you saw my short uh, that I put up following that the next day, you saw what happened. So. I'm going to continue on and I'm going to use something a little bit different just to show that you don't have to use just fabric. I could inlay this with any number of things. I could inlay it with copper wire. I could inlay it with aluminum wire. All sorts of things are available for you to use 
in a situation like this. Well, what I'm going to use is this black cord because I think it will work well. The problem is getting the one end to stick to start with. But that's always the problem. I just hold it in place long enough Okay, now it's stuck. Alright, I'm going to lay me some medium in here to secure some of this. I did that mainly to take some of the stress off my fingers and give them a rest because I am winding this pretty tight. So now I will pull this tight into there. now to make sure that it runs down underneath on the inside and then I'll go back over this with medium so that's good enough there now I'll go back to laying medium on top Turn my lathe speed down as low as it'll go. It's about 50 RPM. And then I will just let this sit up naturally, or set up naturally. And I'm, I'm running the lathe so that I it doesn't sag. And then I will leave this sit overnight. I want to make sure this dries completely. And then I'll come back and we'll turn it up. Okay, I've got this with sanding sealer on it. Got it all smoothed out. I've sanded it to 600 and I think it's looking pretty good. So let's finish it up by turning the inside. Face shield on. Move this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take this the rest of the way out so that I can work in there and, and get this nice and smooth. I've got, and this is good enough already right here. Go about another quarter of an inch. One more time. I don't want to go any deeper.
Let's sand the inside up. I just, I've got some pretty good worm holes in the bottom of this, so I'm gonna fill those with black CA. This is a second bowl that I demoed, and it's better, but it's still got a couple of issues. So I'm gonna hollow it out, but before I do that, I'm gonna address a couple of these issues with some additional embellishment. I'm gonna cut a couple of grooves. I'm gonna cut a cannon. I'm gonna use my 40-40 gouge and I'm gonna try to clean this up and shape that. If you get more off of your scraper than what you see right there, you're taking too big a bite. I want to hit this with some myelin so that I don't get stains in the wood. Bought a set of stainless steel dental picks off of Amazon just for this purpose. I'll try to remember to put a link to these down in the description. Okay, now like the other one, I'll take this off and I'll let it sit for a little while and then I'll I'll come back with one of them and we'll keep going. The CA is dry. All right, I'm gonna send this up through 600. When I get that done, I'll come back. And of course, I forgot to hit record. I put a coat of myelin sanding sealer on the inside and I put a little bit on the outside too. So I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and then I'm gonna knock it back with 600 and then we can turn this little piece of hackberry around and finish the bottom. Cut it in kind of slow, about 500 RPM. Let it work its magic. Yep, it's gone. That's got it all, I think. There's gonna be some dull spots here where this cord is, but it'll be like texturing, so it's really not that big a deal. It still has a cool look. Now once this cools down a little bit, I'm going to apply Hampshire Sheen. They don't take much of this stuff. Really in for true. Now we work it in. Now if I wanted a really, really shiny finish, I'd put another coat on. But I think that's enough. What do you now we can take it out of the chuck, turn it around, and finish the bottom. But before I finish the bottom of this one, I'm gonna hollow the other one. That's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, got the other piece chucked up. I've sanded the outside to 600. I'm happy with that. Let's do some hollowing.
gives me about a quarter inch bottom, and I'm happy with that. All right, that looks good. Okay, I've sanded it to 600. I've got a coat of Mylans on the inside and around the lip too. So I'll let this dry for a little bit and I'll come back and we'll hit it with 600. Now we'll finish the bottom. I'm not gonna make much of a foot. I'm gonna cut this mortar, the tenon off and then I will just dish this out a little bit. <laughs> Let that dry, I'll hit it with 600, and then I'll take it to the laser and engrave my logo. Now we'll do the same treatment to this one, sort of. Rather than cutting off a tenon, I'm going to smooth the bottom, because it's moved a little bit. So I'm gonna smooth the bottom up, and I'm gonna sweep this down into there. <laughs> And like the last one, I'll sand it with, I'm starting at 80 and I'll go up to 600. I'll let that dry and I'll come back and hit it with 600 one more time. Okay. Got some nice chatoyants. Spalted hat gray is just beautiful anyway. So with the exception of the my name in the bottom, this one is done. I think it came out pretty nice. I'll go to the laser and we'll take care of these. So here they are completed. This is the one with uh, multicolored fabric. This is oak. I think I'm still going to put another coat, maybe two, of lacquer on it. But it, all in all, I think it looks really pretty. And there's some nice figure in the bottom. And then this one that I finished with the Hampshire Sheen. There's some really cool figure inside this one too. And that black cord looks nice. It's got a very tactile feel to it. Uh, at the up here where the cord is. It's, it's really weird. Uh, but I like it. That's the bottom. Got my logo burnt lasered in. I just, just spalted hackberry I think is just awesome. I really like how it looks. So they're not very big but 
they're done that's two turnings for you Hopefully I can get this edited and up before Christmas. And again, I want to wish each and every one of you a very, very Merry Christmas and a safe and prosperous New Year. If you don't celebrate Christmas, have a happy holiday season with whatever you celebrate, if anything. Just love one another. Y'all have a good one. Thanks again. And I'll see you next year.